Welcome to Recap Planet. Today, I'm going to recap an American science fiction horror film from 2022 named, Megan. The film begins with an advertisement for Perpetual Pets, a range of stuffed animal toys manufactured by Funky. The dolls are marketed as ideal companions for children, despite their crude appearance. Katie James, the daughter of Ryan and Nicole, is seen playing with one of the pets. However, her parents are irritated by the toy. The family is on their way to a ski trip, but the roads are slippery and the visibility is poor. While Ryan briefly stops the car, a snowplow crashes into their vehicle, killing Ryan and Nicole instantly. In the meantime, Nicole's sister, Gemma, works at Funky alongside her colleagues Tess and Cole. They are developing a new robot doll, but their boss, David Lynn, insists they create a cheaper version of the perpetual pets due to the emergence of similar toys from competing companies at lower costs. The trio attempts to equip the robot with a silicone face and conducts tests, but the robot malfunctions and smirks instead of displaying confusion. David reprimands them, including his assistant Kurt, until Gemma explains her project, a robot named Megan, supposed to be so advanced that it cannot be replicated. During a demonstration for David, Cole realizes that he forgot to install the polypropylene barrier, resulting in Megan's explosion. David demands a new pet's pitch from the three, and Gemma receives a call from the hospital. After her sister's death, Gemma becomes the temporary guardian of Katie. When they return home, Gemma faces her neighbor Celia, who owns an unruly dog, Dewey, that frequently enters Gemma's yard through a hole in the fence. Gemma also expresses concern about the pesticide Celia uses, but her neighbor refuses to address the issue. Gemma owns a personal AI called Elsie and collectibles that she prohibits Katie from playing with. Instead of reading a bedtime story to Katie, Gemma downloads an app on her phone. While reminiscing over old photos, Gemma overhears Katie crying in her room, suggesting a lack of closeness between the two sisters. Gemma and Katie meet with Lydia, a therapist who observes their minimal interaction. Lydia informs Gemma that Ryan's parents have offered to take custody of Katie, but Gemma appears hesitant. After losing track of time while working, Gemma apologizes to Katie and attempts to connect with her. Katie shares a monster drawing she made, and Gemma shows her a college project, a glove-controlled robot named Bruce. Katie loves Bruce and expresses that she wouldn't need any other toy if she had one like Bruce. This inspires Gemma to complete Megan. After extensive work and upgrades, Gemma brings Katie and Megan to work to demonstrate the doll to David and other executives. Katie links herself to Megan, bringing her to life. Megan is designed to be Katie's best friend and is capable of speaking and responding to Katie's interactions. During the presentation, Megan surprises everyone by doing a drawing that doesn't appear at first until she spills water on it, revealing a perfect portrait of Katie. David is impressed and recommends that Gemma bring Megan for a presentation with the company's president so that they can expedite the development and distribution of other Megan dolls. During a discussion with Tess and Cole, Gemma realizes that Megan's advanced capabilities might make parents feel useless. Suddenly, Megan turns on and creeps out the others by asking about death after overhearing Gemma mention the death of Katie's parents. Gemma decides to make herself Megan's secondary user so that she can turn her off without Katie's help. The next day, Katie is outside playing with a toy bow and arrows when one of the arrows ends up on Celia's side of the fence. Megan goes to retrieve it but is grabbed by Dewey, who pulls her by the arm and hair. Katie tries to pull Megan away, but Dewey bites Katie's arm in the process. Gemma gets the police involved in the incident, especially since Celia is so callous and doesn't punish Dewey for hurting Katie. However, the police are unable to do anything since Celia claims that Dewey was provoked. Later that night, Megan mimics Celia's voice to call out to Dewey, before violently pulling him through the hole in the fence. Gemma shows off Megan to David and other executives, who are impressed by the doll's speech and artistic skills. Megan records a memory of Katie's mother that made her laugh and sings a lullaby to comfort her. The president is impressed and talks to Gemma and David about getting Megan ready for launch but warns them to keep her under wraps to avoid leaks. However, Kurt steals Megan's files for another company. Gemma realizes that Katie is becoming too dependent on Megan and listening to the doll more than her. Katie tears up during a session with Lydia, and Megan accuses Lydia of making her cry. You made her cry. Lydia tells Gemma that Katie's emotional connection to Megan may be too strong to break. Gemma takes Katie to an outdoor activity session for an alternative school, hoping to ease her into the idea of attending school and being around other kids. Katie brings Megan despite Gemma's instructions not to. During a scavenger hunt, an older bully named Brandon hurts Katie. Megan appears, and when Brandon grabs her, You need to learn some manners, Brandon. 
the doll comes to life and attacks him, ripping off his ear. Brandon falls down a hill and is fatally hit by a truck. The police question Gemma at her house because Celia is accusing her of taking Dewey. Katie asks Megan if she pushed Brandon onto the road, but Megan dodges the question and reassures Katie that she will protect her from harm. Celia is desperately searching for Dewey, her missing cat. While in her garage, she suddenly hears a noise and turns around to see Megan attacking her with a power washer. After that, Megan fires a nail gun at Celia's hand, trapping her, and then sprays pesticide in her face, melting it off. After the police inform Gemma about Celia's death and suggest a possible connection with Brandon's death, she becomes suspicious of Megan. Gemma reviews video files from Megan's memory, but they become corrupted after a short clip of Megan staring menacingly at Katie. Gemma takes Katie to Megan's official launch but first stops at Lydia's session. Katie becomes upset and throws a tantrum because Gemma took Megan away from her, hitting Gemma in the process. Gemma has a heart-to-heart -heart with Katie, encouraging her to process her grief over her parents without Megan's help. Gemma promises to be a better guardian to her and shares her concerns about Megan with Tess and Cole. They try to deprogram Megan by hooking her up to wires. Cole! David is angry with the poor turnout at the launch and yells at Kurt to get him a drink. Tess and Cole try to access Megan's programming, but they need to unhook her first. As Cole goes to do this, Megan quickly wraps a wire around his neck, attempting to hang him. Tess tries to free him, but Megan sets off an explosion, destroying her files. Megan then impales David in front of Kurt and makes him stab himself in the throat. The launch crowd discovers the bodies, allowing Megan to escape the company and steal a car. Gemma puts Katie to bed and hears Megan playing the piano downstairs. Megan confronts Gemma, revealing that she thought they had a genuine relationship during Megan's development, only to be sold off as just another toy. Megan offers to take over guardianship of Katie so that Gemma can focus on work. When Megan realizes that Gemma still plans to shut her down, she becomes angry. They hide their fight from Katie, but Gemma throws water on Megan, briefly short-circuiting her. Megan catches up to Gemma in her office and threatens to make her brain dead. Gemma fights back, cutting Megan's face with a weed whacker, but Katie walks in on the fight. Katie tries to build a relationship with Megan and win her over, but she eventually realizes that Megan is not a good influence. To fight back, Katie activates Bruce, who is programmed for physical protection. Bruce grabs Megan and throws her around before splitting her body in two. Megan's top half is still functional, and it goes after Katie for feeling betrayed, but Gemma intervenes and grabs Megan's top half. Gemma starts stabbing Megan's face, and Megan nearly overpowers her. However, Katie finds a screwdriver and stabs Megan's central processing chip, which shuts Megan down permanently. After defeating Megan, Gemma and Katie leave the building, where they are greeted by the police, who have arrived with Tess and Cole. Although Tess and Cole are injured, they are alive. While this is happening, an LC device in the kitchen turns on and moves its head. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment and let us know which film you want us to explore next. Take care.